So what is a prescribed burn plan? Simply, it is a document in which we document how the actual area, the prescription area, if you will, the targeted burn area, is actually going to be safely not only ignited but extinguished and accomplishing, accomplishing a goal that is set out beforehand. So what does it actually have in it? A prescribed burn plan can be something that is very narrative in nature, describing exactly step by step what is going to happen. But most of the time we have a burn plan map which actually lays out where each step is going to take place. The number of individuals that are going to be at each point, what their job or what their role is going to be. And then step by step we go through that with that burn plan so that anybody could pick that up and tell just exactly how that fire is supposed to happen. Now a lot of times a, a burn boss, if you will, somebody that is in control of that prescription may need to make adjustments on the fly if possible. If weather conditions change or fire behavior dictates that, that a decision has to be made, a fire boss, one person that is in control of that, making that decision, would then be able to deviate away from that plan if needed. But primarily a prescription is supposed to be set in place prior to the actual day of the burn with many details laid out there as safely, being able to safely conduct that fire as possible with the goal and what the intention of the use of fire would be all described within that prescription. So a prescription burn plan is something that is very critical. It lays the plan out with a goal in mind and trying to accomplish that goal as best and as safely as possible. When a prescription burn plan is put into place, uh, many different things uh, are accounted for in the preparation for that area to actually be safely uh, burned or exposed to fire. Some of those activities may actually be done well before the fire actually takes place, uh, maybe days, weeks, or even months prior to. Depending upon what those conditions are and what those, uh, those actual protocols for a safe conduction of that fire uh, is needed. In other words, fire breaks, uh, does that need to be something that is tilled? And when can that safely be done to where minimal erosion occurs? Is it a backfire that has to be done earlier in the day? What kind of preparation is needed? A burn boss must establish that and really have that outlined prior to the actual ignition or the initial ignition of that prescribed fire area. So understanding what those requirements are, how they're going to be applied, who is responsible for them, and are they adequate? That is the last piece of the puzzle. Many times we think that we have a, the adequate protection around an area to keep that fire concealed within the prescription area. But many times as we certainly bounce against kind of the outer edge of what those environmental conditions are, extremely dry fuel, wind speeds that might be on the upper end of the spectrum or even a lower humidity than what we expected. The greater that we have those particular precautions in place, fire breaks, uh, areas that we're trying to protect, then we need to make sure that those are in place before we actually conduct the fire. The next piece of that also would be is smoke, the generation of smoke. Different types of fuels produce different kinds of smoke. Certainly not only on site, but downrange away from that prescription area is a really important piece of the puzzle to be able to conduct a fire safely. Uh, wetter types of fuels will produce a lot more white smoke and because of that, a lot of times that smoke can be hard to uh, not only breathe in, but certainly the downrange part of that uh, can be extremely dangerous for individuals downrange from the, the actual pres prescribed burn area. Another thing that comes into play as well is just particulate matter. What kind of ash and what kind of residue is, is not only present uh, right next to that area or downrange from that prescribed burn area, but many miles, if not hundreds of miles away. So the type of fuel makes a lot of difference and uh, the expectation as well of what kind of smoke and what kind of particular matter will uh, originate from that fire. KSFire.org is a site that you can actually go in on and predict where that smoke is not only going to travel, but also the, 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 the amount of fuel that is going to be exposed to that fire and what kind of particulate matter and what kind of a downrange load of smoke is going to be traveling away from that site. So there are many different websites that can be used, but ksfire.org is one site that you can go into and get the predicted downrange impact from the fire or from the prescribed fire that you're about ready to conduct.